Nintendo Switch fans looking for a break from Zelda and SNK games can rejoice as the Switch is getting an exclusive Street Fighter game, but we don't respect it. Another week, another Switch game, another re-release, another Alcar review. Stay tuned for our review of Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers. Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers was released on the 26th May and is now the 8th definitive version of Street Fighter 2 since the game's original release in 1991. That's right, we have 8 different versions of the same game. Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Hyper Street Fighter 2 The Anniversary Edition, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, and Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers. To give Capcom some credit, each game has made improvements on the graphics, controls, and general bug fixing with each game. The game has a few changes from Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Tekken Throws is now possible, the balance changes from HD Remix aren't returning for Ultra Street Fighter 2, with characters retaining their gameplay from Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. This means certain moves and changes from HD Remix, like the addition of Ryu's fake Hadouken and Zangief's pin and pile driver being a 180 motion, are not in the game. Chun -Li and E-Honda can store their supers. The first five games that were released over the course of four years really could be considered a precursor to DLC as their main selling point was new fighters. Ah, for Pete's sake. Hello? Are you going to go into a rant about DLC? N no, why would I? You mentioned the word, you need to rant about it. Says who? The internet gods. Plus, you're talking about Capcom, so you can rant about all the on-disc DLC activity that they were doing last generation. I thought we were trying to build relationships to get that YouTube money. New strategy. Step one, flag everything off. Step two, step three, profit. Gotta go. Did... Did he just quote South Park? For the sake of clarity, Street Fighter 2 is a 2D fighting game. The objective of each round is to deplete the opponent's health before the timer runs out. You do this by mashing buttons and eventually, due to the rules of chaos theory, you eventually do a special move. Learn how to do more of these and become a street fighting master, then play online and get humbled. There are a few game modes to keep you playing the game. First we have classic arcade mode. Pick a difficulty, pick a fighter, fight through all the randoms, beat Balrog, Vega, Sagat and M. Bison and watch an ending. And now it's time for a ubiquitous video game rage. This edition is supplied by people that care about timelines. How the f do you not have dancing Khrushchev in a Street Fighter 2 game? I mean Korbachev, that's how we learned about the Soviet Union as kids. I know that the bald guy with the birthmark on his head is the leader of the USSR. I play as Zangief to watch a dancing Korbachev. Why is he not in the game? And why is no one else talking about this? Go and search Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers Korbachev with the quotation marks so you don't get any recommended search bollocks. Nothing, no results, no one cares. Well I care, it's like colorizing Citizen Kane or George Lucas changing episodes 4, 5 and 6. Is nothing sacred in this world? Is nothing held to a higher ground? Also, you say Kami is from England, but use the British flag. You say Fei Long is from Hong Kong, but use the Chinese flag. Get it right. It's an autonomous region. It has its own flag. And while I'm at it, Zangief is from the USSR, not Russia. Respect the timeline. Respect the year. In Street Fighter 2, Russia does not exist. Don't retcon this. What they have done here is tantamount to Spider-Man cutting a deal with Mephisto. Russia, USSR all the way. Dasvidaniya, comrades. There's an online mode for the game with ranked and casual matches. It's a standard affair, but we'll talk about it more when we speak about the controls. We have a lot to say on that. There's also the dramatic battle mode called Buddy Battle that was featured in home versions of the Street Fighter Alpha games, which allows two players to face CPU opponents together. You each share the same life bar, so if your friendship hasn't ended when playing against each other, this is a surefire way to do it. In an attempt to remind everyone that motion controls do exist and the Switch supports them, there is a brand new mode called Way of the Hado, in which players can play a unique first-person mode and experience what it's like to be Ryu. By using motion controls to perform moves, players can fight off an onslaught of opponents using the iconic Shoryuken or Dragon Punch, Tatsumaki Senpakyaku or Hurricane Kick, and Ryu's fireball super combo Shinku Hadoken. The big question here is, does it work and is it fun? Answer? No. The motion controls I found did not work 
that well. There's a clear difference in the motion action to perform the moves, but it seems like the game just randomly picks what you want to do. There's a clear difference between Senpakyake and Shoryuken, and occasionally when trying to do the Senpakyake, it would just do the Shoryuken. There are three different difficulty modes, and the only difference between them is the enemies stand further away. Coupled with the controls, it's not a fun time. There's a little RPG element with improving Ryu's stats, but the effort you put in for the reward is not worth it. The game will also feature the ability to switch between HD visuals and the classic graphics as was seen in 2008's Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. These changes can only be made at the options level, so you can't do it mid-battle, which is a shame. I gotta say, the HD visuals are not all that. They look nice, but not as good as they could have been. You can also switch between the classic and new sound modes for updated music and effects. The classic mode style is not a full change. The head-up display still maintains the HD style, and the announcer for the stages is in the new style. Although this might seem like a minor complaint, but when you make a game that advertises a classic mode on the box, we expect it to have a complete classic graphic and sound presentation. Oh, the controls. Oh, the controls. There's so much to say about the controls. Much like our video on Super Bomberman R, controls are really important in a fighting game. Luckily, there's not much lag, and the punches and kicks flow like they did in previous Street Fighter 2 games. Because of the variety in control modes for the Nintendo Switch and button layout, you're getting a different experience every time you play. Playing the game on portable mode or with a Joy-Con grip is okay. It's not amazing. Personally, I like using the analog stick. I find it easier to do moves. A lot of people may consider this blasphemous and that the true way to play a Street Fighter 2 game is with a D-pad. Unfortunately, the Switch controls don't have a traditional connecting D-pad, just four individual buttons. It's harder to execute moves and also jump forward or backwards. Also, if you do use the buttons, they're not parallel to the punch and kick buttons, meaning that your hand is lower and not aligned. This means that when using the L, Z, L, R, and ZR buttons, they're not parallels and can be annoying to use. Like Super Street Fighter 4 on the 3DS, you can press the screen to execute special moves for your character. Character. More of that later. Playing the game with the individual Joy-Cons is not a fun experience. First off, you have no D-pad. Secondly, you can't use the shoulder buttons anymore, only the SL and SR, so you're two buttons down. Thirdly, they are really cramped and hard to use. For beginners, they might actually be okay because you're just button mashing, but if you want to execute any proper moves and play competitively, this is not the way to go. We mentioned in our Mario Kart review that we could happily play with the individual Joy-Con with four people for many hours. Since then, we now argue over who has to use the Pro Controller in that game. Not because it's bad, but it just feels better with the joys. It's faster to press the few different buttons you need to in that game. In Ultra Street Fighter 2, the new challengers, the crampedness means that it's a hard time. Depending on what hand you write with means which Joy-Con you're going to be preferring due to the placement of the buttons. If you're going to play with two left-handed or two right-handed people, one of you is going to be at a severe handicap as it gets more cramped and uncomfortable. The Pro Controller is the way to go. If you think you're going to be putting hours into this game, invest in the Pro Controller. The button layout is perfect and it works so well. Button customization is the biggest complaint we have with the game. It may seem weird and a bit idiosyncratic on our part, and yes, we are going to show our age now and sound like a bunch of old gamers raging against the new generation and millennials, and you may think we're just blinded by nostalgia, but god damn it, this matters to us. <sighs> Let's do this. Back in the day, uh, when playing Street Fighter 2, you could only play against the computer or your friends. That was it. The problem with the friends was that your own progression and improvement came with theirs, and you could only be the best player out of your social circle. You had to learn together how to play the game. After a while, you would both learn each other's habits and moves. For example, I always jump at you, do a high kick, duck, and do a low kick for a two-hit combo with high damage. Eventually, my friends learned to block as soon as they saw me in the air. Online play opened up a whole world of players to fight against. Finally, you can find out how good you were. If you're serious, ranked play. If you're not, casual play. In Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challengers, you can change the button placements for punch and kicks in pro mode. Great, love it. Personally, I cut my teeth on Capcom vs SNK2 on the PS2, and I like to have my high punch on R and high kick on R2 or ZR. This lets me do that. But there's another control mode called light mode, quoting from the PR material. Light controls let players perform special moves or super combos by either touching the touch screen screen or pressing a single button, meaning that you can do any character special move at the press of a button. No need to do the movement beforehand, no need to hold, just press a button and special. Look at us using Zangief here, just throwing out pile drivers and supplexes like it's nothing. Why does this matter? Well, we found an old man to tell you why. These kids today have no respect for the craft of the fighting game. In my day, we had to learn how to do a fucking special move. None of this bollocks about you got on the Switch now. A star 
tried it with the Nintendo 3DS where you could touch the screen to do a Shadouken or the Zangief special move or a Dar one or the Vega one. Quite frankly, it is un... It's fucking horrible. I can't even think of the words. It's not right. You're supposed to learn how to do these moves. These kids today have no idea where they're going from. It's this problem with this generation and the millennials is summed up in this Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challenges, where they can just press a button and do a move. We had to learn. Fuck, not even learn. We had to figure out what it was because we didn't have any command screen telling us the moves. You lost the instruction manual. You were fucked. You ever tried doing a Zangief special move? Two fucking 360 turns or even one 360 turn and then a button press. It's ridiculous. And to do his super, you had to be right up close to them. It's just not on. And these kids nowadays with their skateboards and fidget spinners and all that malarkey, they can just simply change the buttons so that any button they want, boom, special move, boom, special move, boom, special move, boom, special move, boom, final move. It's just not right. I don't want to live in a world... In a planet where this happens anymore, send me to Switzerland. Now, you could counter argue us by saying, well, these people are just cheating themselves. What does it matter? Let people play the games the way they want to play them. How does it affect you personally? The problem is you can do this in online ranked mode. I could play against someone that could just throw out moves without a care. This renders this whole ranking system being not a proper fighting ranking system, but a pale comparison. We cannot respect it. We hope that at tournaments, this mode is turned off. And just to say, we don't have any issue with smart steering in Mario Kart, so be sure to subscribe to see our video debating the differences between that and light controls. The best way to describe Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challenger, is... Uh... Yes, it's Street Fighter 2, and yes, yeah, Street Fighter 2 was great, so the game is great. I've had a lot of fun playing it, and I still will do, but for £35, you're not getting a lot for your money. Yes, there are two new characters, Evil Ryu and Violent Ken, but their impact is so minor that we have left mentioning them to the end of this review. For a fighting game, that's pretty bad. The first few versions of Street Fighter 2 were based around new characters, and they could carry on that alone in the early 90s, but in the year 2017, God, I need to stop using these contrived sentences, it's just not value for your money. If you're a hardcore Street Fighter fan, you will enjoy it but not getting much extra to keep you occupied. Buddy mode and way of the Hado are just gimmicky stock and stuffers. The classic mode just does not respect the original craft. We joke about the Zangief stuff, but if you're selling the classic mode, do it properly. If you're aching for a fighting game for your Switch, we recommend taking your £35 and buying a load of SNK fighting games on the eShop. For the same amount of money as Ultra Street Fighter 2, you could buy King of Fighters 98, Samurai Showdown 4, Fatal Fury, Waku Waku 7 and World Heroes Perfect. So that's it for our review of Ultra Street Fighter 2 on the Switch. Let us know your thoughts on the game in the comment section below. And as always, please make sure to head over to alcar.com for much more content like this. Thank you very much for watching and this is Sabriel and see you in the next video.